What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So, this video is kind of, it's one of those nostalgic videos for me. I'm just visiting, I would say, kind of an icon in the New Zealand drifting scene. He is partly the inspiration of um, watching drifting. Like, there's only certain people that really kind of stuck out. And you know, obviously Mad Mike's one of them, and another one was Stephen Salt. I'm here in uh, Taranaki, we're just visiting the wife's family and stuff. We actually travel up here quite often, um, but I flicked Stephen saw a quick message. So he's got this memorabilia wall. It's like, he was saying it's like not even quarter of what, what he's got. He's just got a lot of stuff here. It just brings back a lot of nostalgic uh, moments here, but I'm sure everyone knows that car. It's kind of what really would have put him on the map I would say. Is that the same car? Those two there? Yeah those two yeah. Yeah. Um the, yeah one day at Talpo we were practicing before a round and I um <laughs> spun out in the wet and I had the front taken off so that was the whole reason why we went to the 34 front was um I couldn't get my 32 guards in time so next minute we're putting the 34 <laughs> front on it. Um, which was probably one of the first ones, I think, now we come to think of it. Nothing really fit properly, but we made it fit. And the week later, we had to go to Christchurch, so it was sort of the new look for half of that season. He ended up color changing it too. That's when we went to the metallics. So it's still the blue camo, but um, we sort of spiced it up a little bit with adding a bit of pearl and metallic to it, but still keeping it the same theme. Because I'd say in that time there, because that would be like 2006, 7 wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think that was 06, 07. Yeah, and that would be like, back then would be... Back then, you, uh, You'd buzz out at that yeah, kind of stuff. That was like fresh. It wasn't new to us because we'd seen it before. We are only just getting the products, you know, and back then it was pretty expensive to what you pay now. <laughs> but, um, we were trying to be different back then too, you know, but keeping it basic still. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So was that actually your first car, like the 32? Uh, no, I started off with the red 33 there. So I did the D1 and Z. It would have been around at Manfield in 03. But, and that's when I got the sort of bug of being on a track and stuff and going, well, this car's too flash to be doing this on the track because we had some huge offs, <laughs> <laughs> as you do when you're learning. So I ended up selling it and going to the base 32, putting the 25, um, Series 2 25 engine in there because that it was good power for back then, just standard, yeah. you know, so yeah. it did the job. <laughs> yeah. And that was just the knowledge we had too, you know, like, the basic 25 package with a turbo and just frying it in any S chassis or yeah yeah so chassis. so back then there would have been nothing like knowing what chassis was the best chassis or anything no nah, even Seferos were a thing back yeah, then weren't back, they back then we thought you had to have a Sephiro or a Laralta <laughs> to win you know? <laughs> um, I went to the 32 just because it sort of fell in my lap a little bit and Tony, Adam, they all sort of had the set. I just wanted to be different, um, an alpaca guys anyway. Yeah. Um, it was harder in the way of learning more of the um, setups compared to the Sephiro and the Laurel, but back then you just winged it, you know? Is it because of the, are you more talking about like the steering lock and yeah, stuff? Yeah. Is it, is it purely because of the J-arms and the, yeah, and the skull was, lines? Yeah. Because, you know, we had just had no knowledge and Sort of back then it was hard to get knowledge too because we didn't have the internet. Oh, well, we had the internet, we didn't have, yeah. you know, we couldn't yeah. look shit up. So yeah, it was hard for us because we were guinea pigs in a way because everyone learnt all their shit off us too, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, motor packages to car setups. Yeah. And yeah, it, it's come a long way when you look, when you go there now and look back. Do you know where that car is now, the, the 32? Uh, I know it's still around. I have had it offered back to me a few times, which sometimes I'm, it's just been the wrong time. Otherwise I would get it back like my 
my 90 shell just to have it back. Um, it's cool even if I'm not going to do anything with it. It's just it's got some stories for me and the way it, how it's been to Australia and back. And yeah, we put a lot of effort into it. It's my first cover car, um, performance car, car as well. So it's so you've got it back now so after I've got it back shit, now. That'd be like. 10 years or so so it's been yeah 10 years because as soon as it come back i stripped it and sold it which it didn't actually go through many hands i believe it only went through maybe two or three yeah, people two didn't or it? three i think and not that they drove it as much as probably what i did either it's coming down to knowledge of the shell and stuff like that yeah everyone struggled to drive it so they gave up on it it was sad to give it up because we did throw a lot of knowledge to it and um yeah a lot of time working everything out um, so if the 32 come up again and I, I had the coin there, I'd definitely buy it back. Do you um, know who's got it? No, I know it's still in the North Island here somewhere. I think it may have changed hands again. I know a guy down Wellington had it. Old mate Ben's got your old car now, eh? Your, yeah. um, you'd say your most recent, recent build? my last race car, my last D1 car, which I, I think I only, did maybe four rounds of D1 in it. I didn't actually get to drive that car that much, mainly because I was sort of getting to the stage of um, not wanting to, well, I was having no fun competing pretty much. I was running a business, had no time on my hands to put towards being competitive. The car was fast, but I needed more time with it. And every time I was at the D1 I'd just get frustrated because I needed that extra bigger bits like the I kept breaking axles and diff problems yeah. and I sort of needed that upgrade for my power the dog box was bloody killing everything or well, the next weakest link was axles and stuff so yeah. I was sort of getting f frustrated of having a car at that level yeah I wanted it all the fun was taken out of it and I'd noticed that at one round of, I think it was Mount Smart and I just said to my guys, this is it, I'm not having fun here, so I'm gonna can it. So that next week I put it up on the market and pretty much sold it that week, which gutted me because I didn't want to let it go, but six weeks later I was in Japan and I bloody never looked back. I wish I found it earlier because it suits my driving style over there. Um, not having all the horsepower in the world and it comes down to just driver and car setup which is fun because there's more cars to compete with over there in a way than like here there's only like half a dozen that are in that top bracket that you know that are always going to be in the top because they've got all the gear and and they can drive it you know it's all good to have all the gear but you've got to still be able to drive it mm. yeah so is that are those all the stuff from japan all the yeah things? I've done nine trips to a base, so I don't know, there's shit everywhere. They're all your Matsuri ones, so I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's probably a couple missing too. Um, drift Matsuris. And surely they all got heaps of stories to tell? Every every one of those has got a story. Yeah. Um, that's what you see on the videos. Matsuri um, Nishi trains. Um, and the, of course all the night madness at night, you know, north course at night is, um, yeah, nothing like, it's, it sort of reminds you of back in your naughty days of street drifting, you know. <laughs> have that rush and you don't even get that in competing it's just you're out there having the time of your life yeah. and and that's how it should be yeah. yeah yeah i think we could literally stand here and just talk about the nostalgic memories for the next couple of days i think yeah um, but if you guys want to keep hearing these stories put it in the comments down below we, we you know i'm usually in taranaki quite often you know i could always visit them and but, you know, whatever conversation do you want to hear, just put it down in the comments. We can make it happen. There's plenty of stories to tell. It's just trying to, yeah, remember them all. <laughs> um, but they always pop up, so 
Yeah, I'm sure people got plenty of stories to tell about me as well. <laughs> oh. So it's definitely Missouri speak. <laughs> So you got a bit of the uh, paddock, paddock bashing going on here in your backyard? Yeah, I'd love to turn this into a track one day, but at the moment, it, yeah, these things are just as much fun. <laughs> so yeah, we um, get traffic slopping sometimes if there's a whole heap of us going a bit loose. But, um, next minute the cops are coming, but they're pretty sweet, the cops. Uh, they can't really do much either. Yeah. Um, but they just want to make sure that it's controlled and we're, we are on our own property and shit like that. <laughs> they just want to iron out all those little things. It's a little bit bumpy. Oh, you get that on the big job?
Casual has got a, I think it's a 90 chaser just sitting up there. So we've just made it down the road, literally like three minutes down the road to the, uh, the Stephen Soul Customs Workshop. Yeah, yeah, that's all, um, yeah, definitely a workshop for sure. You can see it's a little bit messy, but yeah, we bloody slave here. <laughs> <laughs> um, as everyone does in a workshop, a little small business workshop. Um, yeah, some of my cars hide out here in the corner. Um, this small 90 shell from way back, uh, well, over 10 years ago, I've, it's been out of my hands, so it's good to have it back. And it's all still the same as how I've left it, um, apart from, yeah, they've stripped it out and wrecked it a little bit. <laughs> but it's good to have it back. And even though it's just sitting here collecting dust, it's I don't know, it means a bit to me, and um, one day we will restore it. And, um, I would like to convert it back to a full 90 Mark II, just because of like Sinji Manoa's BM90, the yellow and black setup from a couple years ago. Yeah, I, that style was pretty cool, and I want to sort of make that out of this. I've got all the body panels, um, apart from front guards, but well, I'll get all um, the BM from Japan for it, so we'll get the fenders and body kit. I'd like to bring my car back from Japan and pretty much throw it all into this and yeah, go out on a cheap drifting budget, um, be a good shell, I'd like to convert all the stuff into and and use the shell as well, you know, it's um, it needs a good birthday, so might as well give it a birthday and use it. Just need to make a simple car that you can just jump out and have a laugh at that you just drive really destroyed yeah. it and drove the wheels off it for yeah. that 10 minutes yeah and, and then jump back in and do it again yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely like yeah you could easily have a main tire killing machine but you can definitely dial a lot out and mm. get more driving out of that yeah. tire um especially like yeah. track days and stuff like yeah. that you know where it doesn't really come down to competing for yep. that one or two laps. You just want to go out there and get as many laps mm, as you can. Exactly. That's what I sort of seen before I started going back to Japan. I I missed that. Um, and as soon as I had the week or two in Japan for my first trip, it was just instantly like, that's what I've been missing. Mm. This is what I need. And next minute I was booking my next trip before yeah. I was even home, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a main buzz over there. Well, Japan, back in, I don't know, 10 years ago, for me, m m maybe the same for you, but Japan used to be like the pinnacle of drifting. Like, you'd mm. want to go to Hidebisu and yeah. go and do all those tricks, but now, as you said, it's it's not really that way anymore today. Uh, it's... Well, there's actually quite a few tracks in Japan closing and stuff like that too, you know, because they don't even have the younger generation mm. coming through. like. Everyone you see at Matsuri, uh, there's like half of the Japanese that are there are way older than me. Yeah. Like the like late forties into their fifties, yeah. and they're still there like it was thirty years ago. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and they all still act the same, and it's it's that whole festival vibe of yeah, having everyone together and having some fun. Yeah. Where um. A lot of the younger ones now they're just not interested in it because it's not as easy as what it was back then yeah where it sort of got it, it fell upon everyone over there by the sounds of it when you talk to people over there and their history and all, all of them had toys when they were real young and they'd go off and write cars off up the mountains and stuff like that you know and it's just like here for all us back in the day but even nowadays here you don't even hear of young car yep. guys in cars and mm. it is a dying phase everyone's into bloody four-wheel drive utes and yeah. stuff like that yep. you know it's, things have changed huge 
and it's just the way the cars are as well it's, it's changing with the era yeah yeah it's hard to sort of describe that but yeah i definitely do get it because i i feel like i'm in that generation where i watched your guys era and then i saw the change i'm seeing the change now yeah. Like, and it's kind of it's kind of upsetting in, in some ways it, is, it definitely is for an older person for sure um because it makes you feel older <laughs> <laughs> um but i don't know we lived in such a good era um we've been able to do what we can do in these cars you know where yeah like i say there's no new cars that we we can do what we're mm. doing back in the day you yeah. know like I remember growing up with my older cousins having all all the old rope trees and stuff like that and for someone young that loved cars a rope tree just stood out from everything you know so mm. you, you're in it and yeah you wanted to drive it you just yeah you just live for the old cars um and it's yeah it's just such a shame that it's changed so much now because there was a few generations where everyone sort of knew everything together, but the newer ones coming through now just, yeah, they would have no idea of how much fun we had with cars back in the day. We didn't have phones and all the bullshit yeah. to slow us down. We were out there, yeah, making the most of yeah. every day and yeah. exploring and, yeah, it's changed so much. So is that the same stickers from when you sold it yeah. 10 years ago? Yeah. So that, that's been to Australia and stuff. Yeah, there's all the sign writing from Australia. That's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. But it was mainly all black. I had some sign writing on the side skirts because I was trying to leave it blank just to show that we're there on a budget, you know? And, yeah. Um, is this the same side skirt from there? Yeah, yeah. Bro, it's even got old, um... Yeah, Ross's old Ross's logo. Ross's old logo. logo. Yeah. Bro, you don't ever see that anymore, no, eh? don't. Oh, you got a piece mastered. of history just sitting there, yeah. really? Got a little bit of crash history up there too. The L32 guard, broken bumper of Kurtz there. Is that the one off of 32, that one? In the middle? Yeah, yeah. There's oh, actually still a complete guard on the left hand side. The broken one's on the right. But this, we can't find an actual one for it. It's, it's Bro, that's the coolest crazy. guard ever. It's got the Manus flare. And, no vents and just nice stealth looking yeah. fiberglass guard but so is that when it was 32 front yeah that's the whole reason why i went to 34 because yep. it just oh i could probably fix that now i look at it now. <laughs> 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 but yeah guard off adam's old car is, and, is that one off the yeah, 2j yeah that's the, the recent one. well I, I say recent because it's more or less yeah, your last was, build that you did that was caused from a tire at bloody telpo that demoed that because it had a big under tray under it and everything and it still did that much damage oh, that's adam's old sefi guard adam richards. richards yeah yeah before um even he's a, he's a bit of a throwback even isn't he yeah for sure he's, he's i'm pretty sure he won the championship like uh, 05 or 05 something was his was his year yeah and then he got thrown in the hks dodson's car and um sort of battled that for a bit and ended up going overseas with it all and, yeah, mean and then he come home and um built this this new CF art for which ended up becoming Callum Neeson's car. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he sold it on from there. Yeah. Oh, you've even got the old school plates. Are they like legit the plates car. or? Yeah. Yeah, we used to run all the legit plates back then, yeah. Oh, it's a bit bit of a nostalgic thing for me, eh? Like just seeing this like literally there's stories here, just bits and pieces of just stories from years One ago. Kurt side scoots here off the 34 too. It's not even that broken, but he just left it here because he got so many kits. That, yeah. He would have the 2J then? 2J R34. Yep. He won the championship as well, didn't he? Yeah. Um, I should know this, but... Um, Twice? 
Yeah, definitely twice. I think pretty I, sure. no, it, it was definitely twice. It was twice. I'm pretty sure he won it twice. I was going to say three times, but I might be getting <laughs> ahead of myself because he is a bloody good driver. But, he's um, a mean driver because he even won over an Aussie too, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, the first year we went to Australia, yeah. um, I went over and gave him a hand. And yeah, he just peeled everyone to the ground over there. Right? He just yeah. stood out from everyone and yeah. cleaned everyone up. Yeah. It's crazy the thing. It's been 20 years since D1 started, you know, and yeah. we sort of started getting into things. Um, time flies when you're yeah. working on cars. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you even, you didn't really, you didn't start drifting because of D1, was it? it no, was, shit, no. D1 no, kind even, of came afterwards, yeah, didn't we it? Didn't even, yeah, well, yeah, there was no D1, and um, it was Thomas Chen back in the day. Um, he was the one that decided to have a competition after we started getting a few people yep. to the track, you know. Um, it was definitely messy competitions, but it was just he seen what was going to happen and jumped on it sort of thing. Yep. And then he ran it till 05, I think, 05, 06 or something. Yep. That's when he sold it off. Um, but yeah, when you look at it back then, it's yeah, it's crazy to think that we even started a competition out of what we're bloody doing, you know, because <laughs> it was just like, who could drift a lap? It was, <laughs> most of us would spin out. <laughs> and the old lock stops. Yeah, yeah. The old factory lock stops. Yeah, the old um, factory suspension and stuff was a bit of a handful, yeah. and you can understand now why we were spinning out everywhere, but... <laughs> We're just cracking up laughing and go hit it again, you know, yeah. it's all part of it. So we do a little bit of everything. Um, we've got these big truck ovens, or commercial ovens. So we think I uh, started off with what we're customising and stuff back in the day, and then with my family into trucks and stuff like that. Um, that was my main work and main income was... Um, dealing heaps with commercial. We still do our customised cars, which pretty much all I do. You got a bit of a wide body kit here? Yeah, I'm just... Is it wide? Yeah, wide, no? Fit in, uh, it looks like a wide body yeah, kit. it does look wide. It's just that they've got a big booty on them, eh? From body kit fitting to full restos. And then we do our truck tubes, which is... um. We do a lot of cabin chassis, like this one here. This has just come in um, on Thursday, so we'll strip right, right down and we'll sandblast the chassis up and the chassis is going red on this one and a blue cab. Um, so, yeah, big oven that we do them in. Well, we do a lot of helicopters from down the airport because we're real close to the airport, so we touch up a lot of helicopters, do a lot of boats. We just did a massive staircase for a big flash house around the coast and just unique stuff that um, pretty much someone that knows what they're doing can pull off sort of. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, nothing's easy when it comes to all that custom stuff. And then yeah, we've got, we've got a couple of restos here at the moment that we're trying to finish. 3 to 3 and a RX-7 down the back there, a few everyday cars, my RX-2 project that I've been working on for a while. Finally ready to have its final sand down and paint. The engine's built for it now and everything's all fabricated and done so it's up to me to finish it now so over the next month I'm going to go hard on it and try and get it painted and try and get it running for RE in February and may not be legal but at least we'll be able to take it there and actually drive it around so straight hey oh yeah like it is so straight yeah no i've spent a lot of time blocking it <laughs> yeah but you have to this thing will look so cool once you've got it all done what yep. color or uh, actually we'll just wait till that time comes yeah you'll soon see yeah. well our reunion that's in another what four months isn't it yeah i'll probably listen there <laughs> Three um, months? Three months maybe, yeah. Sometimes we need a deadline to finish things yep, too. Absolutely. <laughs> it's been too long, so I've set a deadline and I've got the bits and the hard work's done, so yep. I just need to throw some time at it. Put it in the comments if you want to see an update on this car when it's done. I appreciate you and uh, 
giving me your time. Nice Shit, time just flew today, didn't it? It has, yeah, but we could keep talking like an all night and yeah. Well, yeah, for days about everything, but yeah, um, leave that for another time, I guess. I'll put uh, Stephen's link in the description here, somewhere down the bottom or wherever, or else just search up Stephen Soul Customs. Yeah. This well, guy is a killer when it comes to this kind of stuff, as you yeah. can see with his work. Have a look on our, um, yeah, Facebook and Instagram posts. Um, you'll see a lot of our, a lot of our good stuff anyway. Um, we do a lot of everyday car stuff, but we do quite a cool, few cool cars too that everyone loves. So, um, yeah, we'll be definitely putting some um, progress photo, uh, pics of this up for sure. Anyway, go give this guy some love, go go and hit him up if you want some work or whatever. We're gonna round this video off here, like like we said. We we'll probably could talk for days, days on end, just talking about some old school stuff and this car and that car. Um, yeah. But yeah, so don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.